The hypertrophy rep range is a myth, or is it? What one, we back straight from the man cave, soon to be Dr. Milo Warfare with Wolf Coaching. And today we're talking about the hypertrophy rep range and whether or not it actually holds true. Traditionally, it was advocated that for strength, you should do sets of one to five reps. For muscle endurance, you should do sets of about 15 or more reps. And finally, for muscle growth, you should do sets of about six to 12 reps. This was referred to as the repetition range continuum. Now, let me touch on some positive aspects of this traditional recommendation first. First, it is definitely true that for maximal strength, lifting in the lower rep range of about one to five reps is productive. In fact, the heavier you go, and thus the lower reps you use in your training, the more of an improvement in one repetition maximum or absolute strength you see. So absolutely, if you wanna maximize strength gains, lifting in that pretty low rep range is the way to go. Now let's move on to a bit of a controversy. In fact, the notion that lifting with at least 15 reps per set leads to greater muscle endurance adaptations, or in other words, how many reps can you do with a given percentage of what you're on or max, that's been challenged recently. In fact, it's been argued that most of those adaptations, being able to do more reps at, for example, 50% of your max, that is a result not so much of increased muscle endurance, but of an increased max overall. So if your max goes up from say 200 pounds to 300 pounds, you might be able to do more reps with 100 pounds, which used to be your 50% of your one rep max. But that's not really because you gained muscle endurance adaptations, but rather because you just got stronger overall and 100 pounds went from being 50% of your max to about a third of your max. So the jury is still out whether or not high reps, say above 15, is best for muscle endurance. But what about hypertrophy? Broadly speaking, the idea that you need to train in the six to 12 rep range for hypertrophy, yeah, it's a myth. There's three studies I wanna discuss on this topic today. The first is a meta-analysis by Gurdjik. Specifically, he looked at five studies comparing higher load or lower rep to lower load or higher rep training on hypertrophy. And essentially, here's what they found. When comparing lifting with on average three to 10 reps versus on average 15 to 50 reps, you saw the same hypertrophy, whether you were looking at whole muscle hypertrophy, whether you're looking at specifically slow twitch fiber hypertrophy, or whether you're looking specifically at fast twitch fiber hypertrophy. It just didn't seem to play a role. So is that case closed? Does that mean we can do any amount of reps per set and still see ideal or optimal growth? Well, maybe not so fast. It turns out there is actually some truth to that six to 12 hypertrophy rep range. And here's why. A study by Schoenfeld and colleagues a few years back compared true protocols. In the first protocol, participants performed three sets of 10 repetitions with 90 seconds rest between sets. In the other protocol, participants performed seven sets of three repetitions with three minutes rest between sets. All sets were taken to momentary muscular failure. Before we go into the results, there is one slight confounder here. In the higher rep group, participants trained with a split routine. So they had three training days a week. On one day, they would do all of their pushing exercises. On another day, they would do all of their pulling exercises. And finally, on the last day, they would do all of their quad or squatting exercises. Meanwhile, in the heavier group, the lower rep group, they trained a mix of all body parts on each day. So in reality, there was also a difference in the frequency being used by the two groups. So while we can make some inferences as to whether or not the results were purely due to differences in rep range, we also need to take into consideration that more sets were being performed by the heavier group, and the heavier group, on average, used a frequency of three times a week versus once a week. Now, on to the results. Bicep growth was similar between groups. Meanwhile, improvements in strength, specifically in squat and bench press one rep max, tended to be better in the group training heavier, those seven sets of three. However, that difference was only significant when it came to the bench press. Here's the kicker, however. They saw the same growth, but one of the groups spent a lot more time training. If you do the math, you'll realize that the group training with sets of three spent a lot more time in the gym just to get the same bicep growth. So clearly, when your reps per set go too low, say below about five, you see that your time efficiency goes way down and the effectiveness of each set on muscle growth really diminishes. So going below five reps or thereabouts is not a good idea for hypertrophy. But can we go too high? The answer is maybe. As I mentioned earlier in the meta-analysis by Gurdjik, you did see that training with loads as low as about 30% of your max, or the equivalent of about 50 reps per set, 
still resulted in great growth. However, potentially, maybe there's a load that's just too light. A load so light that even if you do 100 reps or more reps than that, you just don't see the same growth per set as you would if you trained with an adequate load. This is where a study by Lasavikius and colleagues comes in. In this study, they randomized participants' limbs to one of four conditions. In one condition, they trained with 20% of their max. In another condition, with 40. In the third condition, with 60%. And finally, in the fourth condition, they trained with 80% of their 100 max. These participants were untrained, and they performed both elbow flexor, or essentially bicep training, and knee extensor training, so essentially quad training, for 12 weeks. The results are not super clear, but it does seem like there was less growth, at least when you compared the 20% group to the 80% group, so the really light group to the relatively heavy group. This was consistent across both the biceps and the quads. Therefore, there might be a bottom floor to how low you can go while still maximizing growth. If you go too light, you may just not get the same growth as if you went a little bit heavier. With that being said, it seems like the floor is somewhere around 30% of your max. What's worth keeping in mind is that 30% of your max, if you go to failure with 30%, that will be a ton of reps. In fact, based on the most recent meta-analysis, looking at the relationship between load and how many reps you can do before reach failure, with 30%, you can do about 50 reps. That's right, five zero. Meanwhile, at the top end, you can get about five reps with anywhere between 85 and 90% of your 100 max. So based on these three studies, it seems that you can do about five to 50 reps per set and still optimize growth on a set per set basis, provided you're training close enough to failure. And unfortunately, this is where a slight caveat comes in. Training close to failure or all the way to failure with reps much past 20 or 30% becomes very challenging. You get a lot of burn and for compound exercises, you can get very out of breath. It's a very uncomfortable situation to be in, to be honest. And so taking it all the way to failure with very light loads can be very challenging. And so while in these studies, when participants are essentially forced or really encouraged to go to failure, you see that even with light loads, you can see really robust growth. In the gym, on your own, it might be a bit more challenging to go that close to failure. And so practically speaking, you might prefer on average training a bit heavier maybe keeping most of your training between say five and 30 reps. Here's a caveat to that caveat though, because recent analyses have shown that you grow more when including a variety of rep ranges versus just one, it is likely worth including a variety of rep ranges within your program if your goal is to optimize growth. What I would personally recommend for the most part is doing some work in your program between five and 30 reps. Most of that training should probably come from the five to 15 rep range, but some in those higher rep ranges is likely beneficial for muscle growth as well. Importantly, if you're on vacation or you don't have access to sufficiently heavy resistance or you're injured and you don't really enjoy training with low reps, all of those reasons can be solid rationales for using higher reps per set and still optimize muscle growth, provided you find you can push yourself close enough to failure while doing so. So the hypertrophy rep range is kind of a myth. You can do anywhere between five and 50 reps and still optimize growth per set, but it might be a bit more challenging to push quite as close to failure with those higher reps. However, they can be really useful when trying to round out your program, when training around an injury, when training when you don't have enough resistance available, or when you just don't feel like training is heavy. That's the video. If you like the video, please comment, like, subscribe. A lot of research within this one. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you guys, my viewers, in that next one. Peace.